what you know is isotretinoin. Um, one of the biggest concerns about it is that if a young woman of childbearing potential were to get pregnant while on isotretinoin, the a baby could have serious birth defects. And so that's the whole reason behind, uh, or the main reason behind the eye pledge system and different systems that mandate um, close oversight over uh, all patients that are on isotretinoin. And so um, uh, in in most you know years past we've said okay well if you're abstinent then that can be um, that's okay and that qualifies um, but if you're not abstinent then these are the different things that you must do two forms of uh, birth control to ensure that you don't get pregnant but what we're finding is that um, people are not always truthful or they're not able to comply later with the things that they have listed and so um, it is you know safest for for all people involved that um, if a patient is on a patient independent form of birth control, which is something, uh, you know, an implantable progesterone or an IUD, mm -hmm. uh, that's the safest and uh, easiest uh, method to prevent um, pregnancy while on isotretinoin. So it's always a very, you know, a, a touchy situation um, because it's not just the patient, but it's also the parent. Um, so it's a little bit of a triangle of, uh, of involvement. Um, and, I, and I don't um, demand that all of my, you know, young women um, have those patient-independent forms of birth control. Um, certainly there, there are plenty of young women that I treat that are on oral contraceptives, or they list oral contraceptives as one form uh, and an additional form as, as their second form of birth control. But um, I have very frank conversations, especially with young women who are um, up front that they don't think they can be compliant uh, with these things, or perhaps we've had a history of not being able to be completely as compliant as we'd like with medications um, and that sort of thing. And so there are definitely sometimes parents that are resistant to that. Um, uh, and if a parent is truly adamant against a certain form of contraception, um, then uh, a lot of times I try to work with the family in, in what they might be comfortable with, but what also makes me comfortable as their treating physician. It's been very rare that um, because of the issue of contraception, I've refused to treat. Um, uh, because part of it is also that it is a triangle. And um, if I'm treating a minor child who really needs a medication, but perhaps the reason that we can't get to an agreement is the parent is adamant about the contraception part of things. Um, uh, in those situations, it's a hard, it's a hard decision because um, I hate to deny the child the treatment that they really need um, uh, because of a factor like that. And so it's a very individual case-by-case -case basis. Um, I, you know, I spend a lot of time talking about that issue if I am going to go ahead and treat. Um, and we talk about it every single visit. I see them every single month. We talk about it every single visit. Uh, and of course, we have to always reinforce it. So. Yeah.